The Scottish Fire and Rescue Service Heritage Trust is a registered Scottish charity which looks after the heritage, history and traditions of the Scottish Fire Service. The Scottish Fire and Rescue Centre Heritage Trust Museum acts as a link between the local communities and the operational fire service. We we'll enhance and enrich and maintain the history and heritage of the Scottish Fire Service. The modern firefighter covers a multitude of tasks but still need the same basic abilities of the firefighters back in Victorian times. We are possibly the most proactive organisation involved in conservation of fire appliances, equipment and uniforms associated with the fire service. Uh, we are recording the history throughout the decades of the outstanding efforts and achievements of firefighters, male and female, throughout Scotland's history. Hi, I'm Dave Adam. I'm Chairman of the Scottish Fire and Rescue Service Heritage Trust. The Scottish Fire and Rescue Service Heritage Trust is a registered Scottish charity which looks after the history, heritage and traditions of the fire service, particularly in Scotland. We are now standing here in the old fire station in Greenock, which opened in 1887 and closed in 1960. It now houses the Museum and Heritage Centre for the Scottish Fire and Rescue Service Heritage Trust. The Heritage Trust not only runs the museum, we also do restoration and conservation on uniforms, fire appliances and equipment associated with the Scottish Fire Service throughout the years. We have a vast fleet of preserved appliances in our custodianship. We take our appliances to open days, shows and fates where we showcase the fire engines and appliances to members of the public to bring the history of the fire service alive. Within the old fire station at Greer, within the Heritage Centre, we have uh, a whole selection of vehicles, equipment, appliances and associated history. An example being behind me here is the Dennis F8 fire engine, which is the type of appliance that would have served in the station when it shut in 1960. Hi, my name is John Cairns and I'm the Secretary of the Scottish Fire and Rescue Service Heritage Trust. I'd like to welcome you to the Greenock Museum and Heritage Centre. Uh, this particular fire station opened in 1887 and operated through until 1960. In this particular area, we look at the protective clothing and equipment that firefighters used from the Victorian times up until the present day. Chevrons were cut on the floor when the station first opened and this was because the station had horse-drawn fire engines and the horses were harnessed up to the steam-driven fire engine uh, and had to get some traction to actually pull the weight of the horses forward and when they were standing on these chevrons it was known as them being on the run and on the run is still the expression used for fire appliances which are immediately ready for dispatch. So within this area we have examples of all sorts of protective equipment used by firefighters from the original Victorian times. In the early days, firefighters tended to come from maritime backgrounds, so a lot of them had big bushy beards, and it was common for firefighters in those days to douse their beards in water and stuff the beard into their mouth to act as a coarse filter to take smoke out. But things have evolved from there, and then behind me you can see the first example of a proper breathing apparatus where you have a smoke helmet uh, providing an air supply to a firefighter who might have to go into a burning building. Thereafter, it moved on to closed circuit breathing apparatus with a mouthpiece and a nose clip, so you were still allowed to have a beard. But nowadays, all modern firefighters have to be clean shaven because their protection relies upon a tight fit of a mask. The firefighter behind me is also wearing a woolen jacket, and wool is a very good insulator against heat and uh, if it's wet and it has embers falling on them, they tend to self-extinguish. You'll see throughout the whole of this display here examples of the evolution of protection right the way up to the modern firefighters' breathing apparatus, their protective jet-style helmets with integrated gold protective visors. So the modern firefighter covers a multitude of tasks but still need the same basic abilities of the firefighters back in Victorian times. Hi, I'm Graeme Kirkwood and I'm a volunteer here at the museum in Greenock. Behind me, we have a picture of the crew in 1893 standing in front of the front door of the station. 
The man in the centre of the picture standing up is Fire Master Taylor. And in this cabinet over here, we will see Greenock Fire Brigade Long Service Medals. And we have four there which belong to members of the Taylor family. The four different generations were in the Fire Brigade. The uniforms, the way the crew's uniforms would have been hanging up, ready for them to jump into, onto the appliance and away out. On the other side of the Europe appliance, we have a memorial area which records the names of all the firefighters killed in the line of duty in all the brigades that made up the then Strathclyde Fire and Rescue Service. Greenock was bombed for two nights in May 1941 and over 200 people were killed. We also have a painting by Paul Dussault, who was an auxiliary fire service fireman in London during the Blitz. The picture is called September Nightmare. It looks like firemen fighting a fire, but if you look closely in the flames, you can see demons. There's also head and shoulders of Hitler and Mussolini in it. There are various other things all hidden in it and we probably haven't found them all yet. This engine here is a 1921 Leyland open fire engine. Uh, it had to be hand cranked to start, the tyres are solid, no air in them. Bumpy ride on the roads, the men sat along the sides holding onto the ladder, getting dressed on the way to the fire. And the driver and the officer in charge were on the front without a windscreen, getting the full force of the weather. The chair in the corner here is a, a chair that was made by John McLaughlin, the Governing Chairman for Firemaster Jameson in 1993. The back piece is the wooden door from the old Hampton Fire Station where Firemaster Davison started his career. At the top of it we have the badge of the Strathclyde Fire Brigade as they were then called. There are seven thistles on it because there were seven members in his family. There is a stag on it because Strathclyde covered part of the Highland region. The seat is made of plywood which has been bent into the shape of a hose. And if you look underneath the chair you'll see a wooden hedgehog on a spar of wood and the spar of wood are from the parallel bars in the school in Glasgow that John McLaughlin went to. I say every piece of wood is recycled, it doesn't use any new wood at all. Uh, we're in our facility here where we do the majority of our restoration work on old fire appliances, equipment and uniforms. All our appliances, where possible, we like to have them totally roadworthy so we can take them out to events. Uh, this of course means a lot of work from our volunteers who actually work on restoring these appliances and get them up to roadworthy and drivable conditions in order that we can take them out to uh, events where the public can see how these fire engines worked in their day uh, as operational appliances. Some of these vehicles are minor restoration work, some of the vehicles are total rebuilds and will take several years to do. We also have people in the background who do a lot of historical research and artefacts work. We have a complete range of volunteers who enhance and enrich and maintain the history and heritage of the Scottish Fire Service. One of our major restoration projects was our 1939 turntable ladder which served in the city of Nottingham. We actually resourced this from a collector who had it in a barn in Northampton. When we went down to pick it up on our low loader, uh, there was actually hens nesting in the engine and it was in quite a bad state of disrepair. However, we managed to bring it up here and work on it and it's now fully restored and it is now the pride of our fleet. It attends events and uh, goes out and the public can see it. Uh, we also believed it was actually damaged during the Blitz in Nottingham where the fire engine served and there's actually shrapnel damage on the ladder which is still there. So we've actually kept the shrapnel damage in place as it's part of the history of the appliance. Hi, my name's Ian McLeod. I'm part of the Scottish Fire and Rescue Service Heritage Trust. I'm here helping to restore some of the vehicles. The one behind me is a Dennis F8, fully restored, that used to belong to the South Eastern Fire Service and it's now in our keep. So it's been fully restored to roadworthy condition and it goes to various events. Wooden cab and metal skinned and handmade. They're all slightly different of each other. The grey one here is a stalwart of the British government during the Second World War. They made thousands of them. They used for all sorts of tasks. Ambulances, naffies. This particular one was a crew vehicle for the auxiliary fire service. And they would tow a trailer pump to an event leave the pump along with the crew and go back and pick up another crew with another pump to go somewhere else. And after the war finished, rather than throw them away because they were such good vehicles, they gave them back to the municipal brigades who converted them into fire engines. 
and there's one in the museum, exactly the same, but it is a fire engine, fully fledged fire engine. We're doing just now that the front windscreens, um, there are two separate windscreens hinged they could open up for air venting. So we've replaced the windows and we're just finishing off the task, we're waiting for rubber seals coming. So the full respray are paint, hand painted. Basically put it back in the road, that's it, ready for the road again. Our refurbishment consists of the small portable pumps that you see here, because they're mobile four-wheel drive fire engines. That one is a more modern counterpart of this. Both of them are claimed to be portable, and they're not exactly light and extremely difficult to take over on rough terrain. This particular pump is a wage axe. These pumps would have been used way back in the 30s and 40s. The pump itself has been completely stripped down. The next task is to take this drive part here and replace it onto the chassis. This will go into the air with the tank sitting on top. Obviously everything will be painted and done before it's physically fitted. But then it'll be back into complete working order. The Scottish Fire and Rescue Centre Heritage Trust Museum provides an exceptional day out for all the family. Uh, we are recording the history throughout the decades of the outstanding efforts and achievements of firefighters, male and female, throughout Scotland's history. And our mission is to preserve a living museum here that carries forward the history to the next generations.